to rock and roll, so, and that's what I'm preaching. So. I got the devil deep inside of me. My name is Reverend Beatman. I'm uh, the head honcho of Voodoo Rhythm Records. I'm a one-man band normally. What drew me first into rock and roll music was uh, actually I was I had a record collection of my parents. There were like Elvis Presley, Bill Haley, and stuff like that in it. And you know, I listened to rock and roll. I listened to radio, of course, the Bay City Rollers, Sweet, and uh, Slade, and stuff like that. But what uh, in Switzerland we had a half an hour. Uh, music for the use per week in the radio, just to tell you that in the computer world it's not normal what we have today. What, half an hour, so but they, they bring okay music, but then we had like a radio where you can uh, get BBC London and BBC London I heard the first time like punk music or Motorhead and stuff like that and when I heard first time Motorhead it blew my head off. <laughs> I went to concert and see how the bands are playing and I wanted to be that. So I kind of copied how they look like, how, what they did with the fingers. And I tried to put my fingers also on the guitar that it's something like sounds like that. I had my first guitar was from my father and so I tried these chords but I, I, uh, they, my parents they said, hey, you have to learn how to play real guitar, you know, if you want to make, make guitar player. So they sent me one hour to a guitar, guitar lessons, and then I had to play like la 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 <laughs> And I said, no, 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 I want to play that. <laughs> and the guitar teacher just said, no, just go away. But my ideas are, we're always so quick, quick, quick. I, I have to do something right now and create and produce and stuff like that. And as a one-man band, this is like the perfect medium. But I had this band, The Monsters. Then I went traveling in the USA uh, end of the 80s. I was, uh, went to the US for a half year with a tent, we bought a car and we drove all around the USA. And go to thrift shops and buy records and stuff like that and old guitars. And, and so then in Los Angeles we went to see a Lucha Libre fight, so a, a wrestling fight where people are yelling at the wrestlers, kill yourselves, kill, you fucking asshole, fuck you, fuck. I kill, 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 stuff like that. And I saw, wow. This is amazing. It's just a show and people hate you or love you. It's totally reaction, totally. And at this time, a, a, end of 80s was the big uh, mainstream techno area where uh, nobody went to concerts. Everybody just like, uh, 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 take in, take in, take in. Don't give anything, you know, just take, 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 take. And for me, when I saw that, uh, the wrestling fight for me was like, this is it, this is it. This is, I, I have to buy a wrestling mask and go on stage and fight against myself and tell the people hate me. <laughs> and then we go back to Switzerland, I had my first show and the people just, oh my God, what's, what is he doing now? So I went to Belgium and tour and then it's, it worked really fine. The people yelled at me, they throw stuff at me and they, instead of clapping, they booing me out, you know, it's like, was, uh, I, I forced a reaction from the people. I wanted, give me, give me something. I give you something, you give me something back. So. Hello? What oh, beat man? How you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. What? Wrestling tonight? Yeah, no problem. I'll be there. I'm just cooking something. I turned the name uh, into Reverend Beatman from Lightning Beatman because I was touring about 10 years as Lightning Beatman with, with the wrestling mask on. Normally I'm a shy person, so I'm born shy, you know, it's like... And, but the mask, they, he, he gave me something, you know, I can hide behind the mask and, and I became another person, it was fantastic for that. So. But then this obsession of being, becoming another person became pretty heavy. That I, I did things I would normally not do. I'm not an Iggy Pop, I'm not a Chi Chi Allen or something like that. I'm not that extreme. So. 
but I was extreme when I was lightning beat man, cutting myself and with the head on the wall and, and beating people and they beat me. I went to the hospital break here. It was normal for lightning beat man. But then it was, uh, it was just too much. In the last show I played was uh, in a museum, quite a big museum in, in Switzerland, and uh, they said, Beatman, uh, come and make a performance for us. Then I said, I, uh, my performance is very heavy. They said, it's very good, heavy is very good. They said, they said it's pretty heavy. Okay. Then I made my performance as uh, Lightning Beatman. I set up my stuff and I was playing it uh, next to a salad bar and I was playing like crazy, like wah, destroying everything. I jumped on the salad bar, took the salad, throw it on the paintings, on the super expensive paintings, stuff like that. And then the curator of the museum, they had to hold him back, the bouncers, because he wanted to kill me. So he said, fuck, stop, stop. I wouldn't stop. They turned off the, the amps. They would turn off the thing and put the battery amp on and he yelled even more at him that he, that, he, that I wanted to have more reaction, you know? I wanted that reaction, exactly that what I want. This rage of him, I wanted. More, 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 more. And then I, my show was over, I went to him and shake him hands, thank you, it was my performance, and it uh, was too much. For me as well, it was too much. You know, I did that, I, I, I did that for 10 years, getting a reaction out of people. I was done. But it was also a time that I lost my voice for one year. The idea was also to scream as much in the microphone, the blood comes out, and, and then I almost killed myself. And it, was, it was not a good time, then I saw the light. One day I saw the light, and then everything was clear. So I became Reverend Beatman. I have a mission now. <laughs> for, for me, the only answer to everything is always rock and roll, so, and that's what I'm preaching. So. You know, I'm just a peer. I'm not, I'm not really a, you know, I'm a fake, actually, so. I just use that, so. But I'm not. I'm real. That's the thing, so. You know, what is real and what's not, so. Who's real and who's not, so. I'm a preacher. I, I preach things. I do things, so. But I'm not real, so. But I'm real. So. So how can I uh, transport that to people who don't understand? There are people spitting on me, you know, they, beat, they want to beat me up and stuff like that. I had that many, many, many times, so. I'm from Switzerland and uh, maybe you have a stereotype from Swiss people. They are kind of a bit straight and not so wild and stuff like that. And if you think that, it's exactly like that. <laughs> you know, I, but I created my person, Lightning Beatman. This is an out, out of the head person, you know, so wild and so crazy and so far out. And this was too far out for Swiss people. So in Switzerland, I really had a hard time to even find places to play. So I, I started to play, my first countries were Belgium, France, Holland, stuff like that. In Switzerland, they see me as a misfit and they see me as a freak. They see me as not a part of, of culture, actually. So it's what I see. They have to accept me because I get prizes uh, here and they play me even in Arte and stuff like that. And they see that and go, what the fuck, well, why he? You know, he, he uses so dirty words, why? Uh, and why not, uh, whatever, DJ Bobo or whatever. <laughs> so they kind of have to accept me. It's a, and it's a wonderful, kind of a wonderful thing. I'm a completely misfit that they don't actually want to accept, but they do. They, they do with the time because they have to. Rock and roll has everything. Rock and rolls also have, have hate, and love, you know, it's, it's all, but it's a, it's a community that works, you know, I see it. Uh, I come from Switzerland and they call that a country, you know, in this, in this country everybody, they should be Swiss people, but I'm not, I don't fit in there. So. I travel all around the world. I can travel to Vietnam. I, I played in Africa, Australia, America, everywhere. I, everywhere I find my people, and those are my people. You know, it's like it's not a country that that, uh, that 
tells that those people are like that. It's not. I, I find my people everywhere in the world, and this is rock and roll. So. My reason to make the, the Voodoo Rhythm label is a, is a very, very simple uh, reason. So I see a band, and I'm a record collector, and I see a band, they don't have a record to sell. So I think uh, I have to make a record with them, that I have, can have this record in my record collection. And then I thought, why just make one record? I can make many records more to, <laughs> to give some other people, so it's cheaper for me at the end, you know. So my record is probably for free then. <laughs> so I'm very smart, smart businessman. Huh? <laughs> With the label in total, I, I sold about a million records. It's not bad. Not bad for a small label. I started to make music because I, I wanted to be uh, world known. I want to make music that the whole world knows. That's my plan, to make that with underground music, with do-it-yourself music. I, I, I want, to, want to show the people, the world, that it's possible to make. So. And I'm working still on it. So. Legends are dead. <laughs> I'm still alive, gladly, but uh, I'm really happy that I'm alive and I'm, that I can play and it's really good. So I don't want to be a legend at all. Not one second, please. I got the devil